Okay, number six says, Fred solved this equation, and the work is shown here. Fred made an error between steps one and two. So between here and here, it says Fred made an error. Explain the error that Fred made. And then for part B, what is the solution to the original equation? Well, what I see going from those two steps, I see the mistake right here. And that is you've got a minus 42 plus four. Okay, so you'd have to type an answer. You could probably start by doing a capital A to indicate this is your answer to part A of this question. The error that Fred made was, you could say this beautifully, you can say it not great. Let's see, what it was, um, he combined negative 42 and positive 4 into um, positive 46 instead of what it should have been which was a negative 42 plus 4, which would be negative 38. All right, so that is his mistake. All right, and so then for part B, what is the solution to the original problem? Well, you're going to have a piece of scratch paper. So what I would do is right here on a piece of scratch paper, I would write 24x minus 56 equals negative 6x and instead of plus 46, remember, it should be minus 38. All right, and so then to solve this equation, um, remember we've talked in my class about when you're combining, or sorry, when you're solving an equation, you can use like a vertical line to help make sure that you're doing the same thing on each side of the equation. So I'm gonna try and get my x terms together first. I'm gonna add 6x on both sides, and that way it cancels out on the right-hand side. And I end up with 30x minus 56 equals negative 38. And so now I'm going to add 56 on both sides. And that comes out to 18, positive 18. And so to solve this, I need to divide by 30 on both sides. And what I end up with here is a fraction that does not divide out to give me a whole number. So you can either list it as the decimal or a reduced fraction. I would say x equals 18 over 30. So basically the two ways you could probably say this, 18 over 30 reduces, the both of those are divisible by 6. So you could reduce 18 thirtieths to 3 fifths. Or if you're using a calculator and you divide, you'd probably get the decimal, 0 0.6. So down here for my solution for part B, I could type either of those. But this is an important test, and it always is a little concerning sometimes if you get a fraction or a decimal. So it's worth your time to check this. Okay, if we want to check this, the original equation said 8 times 3 times x minus 7 should equal negative 6 times x plus 7 plus 4. So I'm going to take my answer here. I'm going to use the decimal. 0 0.6. I'm going to put 0 0.6 in for x on both sides. And if you have this written on a piece of paper, it's easier to work with maybe. You can type this into your calculator. You can use that online calculator that they give you. Um, 8 times the quantity 3 times 0 0.6 minus 7 is negative 41.6. And we're still wanting to know, does these two sides equal each other? When we plug that solution in, negative 6 times 0 0.6 plus 7. Um, close the parentheses and then plus 4 and sure enough negative 41.6 so I can confirm
that I've done this correctly by plugging that answer into the original equation. And now I'll go ahead and type it. The solution is x equals 0 0.6. And that should do it.